It is of that world that she is filled with and then she is preparing herself for that world. It says she has a firmness that enables her to carry and bear the burdens and the difficulties and the trials of life. She's girded to be able to work and do that which is needed. She's girded. She's bang for work, not for hard work. She fears God. That's, that's what, what comes most through in this text. She fears God. And everything that she does in her life is a spin-off of her fear for God. When I read this, I see this. Wow. It says, it says, she always encouraged the children to remain faithful. And then it says again in bold letters, always to God. Always put God first. She was strict with her children. The priest, um, the house priest mentions that when the children speak of the strictness, they say it with a, with a laughter, with a smile, with, a, with, with an endearment. Because I said to the priest, you can also, you can also have this situation where the children speak of the mom and say, was She was horrible. She was strict, but, but, they, but they look at it, their perception of that strictness is, a, is with not a nice feeling. But he says when they speak about it, they can, yo, ma was, ma was streng geweest. <laughs> but it was it's, 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 it's with, a, with an endearment. With a love for that strictness. And it is then evident that that strictness, they know and understand where that strictness originated from, where, what place it came from. It came from a place that I want to prepare you for the future. Said she loved serving God. And especially singing, she had a good alto voice, it says. She had the utmost respect for her bearers of blessings. I see her say, what she sang in the lollipop girls. <laughs> the lollipop girls. But it shows she also, in, in all of that, she also had a balance. She also enjoyed life. She also made sure that she... She experienced the things that God had put her on this earth also to experience. To be happy. Not to be miserable in serving God. Not to be angry in serving God. But to find a joy in serving God. She loved dancing and singing, especially dancing to Lang Aram music. I, we spoke in the sacristy and, and we, we can connect with this. I can connect with this because that was my parents as well. Strict. Ten o'clock you must be sleeping. The radio must be off. Your and your daddy's shoes had to be polished. That was how we were brought up, brothers and sisters. Not because our parents wanted to be ugly and nasty. Not because mama wanted to be nasty. Because he felt it was a, 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 I can over you cry. No. There was an investment being made. An investment being made in the future of her children. And remember she did this without the presence of her husband. Without the presence of her father. And she did this gladly. Why? She feared God. The most important things, brothers and sisters. So to her, her fear of God drove a sense that my meeting with God cannot just be summa so. My meeting with God on a Sunday morning in, the, in his house cannot just be something that I get up at 8 o'clock in the morning and I just get done quickly and we go to church. 
It was something that was prepared for on a Saturday already. We're going to meet with the Most High God in His house. That was that was who a virtuous woman who feared God. You had to be ready. It says the the hymn books had to be ready. The clothes had to be ready. Alles moet gestrikt geweest het. I I can picture this. I can picture this. And in the same way that that preparation took place for a Sunday, that was all part of her preparation for meeting her God. For meeting Him in His kingdom. That was her life, Mama. Also she was called Auntie Mag or Titi. And, and you can hear, these are all fond names. These are, these are names which have endearment to it. Mama, Auntie Mag, Titi. That is the name that we give for someone who you are on is, Titi. Who is on you is. She will be remembered as a loving and caring mother, grandmother and great-grandmother. She always taught her grandchildren about family values and always had something to say. And yet speaks about a woman who shares wisdom. And that's what she wants. She, she, she shared wisdom. Always had something to share with the, with the children. Words of wisdom to set you on a path. She lived a blessed life. Yes, she had difficulties. It says... To raise six children without a husband in tough times. She she grew up in Goodwood Acres. I'm not going to call it Acres. It was Goodwood Acres. Those are tough days. But she did what she needed to do for her family, for those around her, preparing her children for a future whether it be natural or spiritual, because he feared God. Now, giver of the fruits of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. This is now for someone else to do. It says, giver of the fruits. It doesn't say, she receives the fruits of her hands. Yes, no doubt she receives that in the heavens now. The gates that it speaks of, she's praised in the gates. Jesus Christ praises her in the gates. Jesus Christ is ready to receive her. She will eat of the fruits of her works in the heavens. But this is, give her of the fruit of her hands. And let her own works Praise her in the gates. Who must do this? You know, in the, we prepare naturally, I don't want to keep the service too long, but my heart is full. <laughs> we prepare for our old age as parents and and we prepare to leave something for our children. And we put away savings, we build up a pension and stuff like that. And you know, the financial advisors tell you in your woe. Because a lot of, a, 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 a lot of parents say, when I die, everything goes to my children. They tell you, yeah, everything can go to your children. But put a trustee in charge until they get to about 23, 25. Where they understand the value of money. And they can work properly with money. And they don't waste it and throw it away because now suddenly they're 18. And I've got all this money. I'm going to have one huge party. I want to bring this 
to give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. This strictness of hers had an aim for your life. I spoke to a family now in the week and we spoke about when they say you mustn't spoil your children. Now from what I can hear here, she definitely didn't spoil her children. She didn't spoil her grandchildren either. Maybe when it came to the grandchildren, she started, because that would normally happen. Ones that come afterwards, uh, you know, even mommy and daddy can't say anything. But she definitely didn't spoil her children. The meaning of the word spoil your children isn't so much the, the fact that you give them everything they want. The meaning of the word spoil your children is that you're destroying their future. It's like when milk goes off or vegetables go off. You spoil it that it is useless to you in a couple of days' time. And when you spoil your children, they become useless human beings. They add no value to the future because you've spoiled them, you've destroyed them, because you haven't built into them the values, the principles, the godliness, the faith that is needed for them to live a chaste, modest, value-adding, faithful, God-fearing life. This is what she did. So for us, brothers and sisters, who have experienced this teaching of us, this life of us, this wisdom that she's fed into us, family, loved ones, friends, whoever it may be, it's for you and me to now not waste and discard, squander that investment that she has made in us. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Our works and our life must Speak of the, must be the fruits of the work that she's put in. Others must, you know, it, it must be able to say, you, know, you, can, you, you can see nice Magdalene's a kind. You can see what uitkomers wat sy ingelee het. That's Magdalene's child, look at that. Making, making value of his or her life. Serving God. Still perpetuating the life that she did and teaching the same to their children. Making sure that their children aren't spoiled goods. Making it spoiled share that they, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren are God-fearing. That they, they reap the fruits of the benefit of, of the investment that she made. And let her own works praise her in the gates. When this gate said spoken here about, I want to just read quickly. This gate talks about her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. So this gate spoken here is when he gets into the, you know, the forums of the, the important people. And then the elders here speak of her and speak of this virtuous woman. They, they, they say, yo, he's got a good wife. She's a special woman. She works well. She's respectable. She's, she's not uh, a, a, a gossip monger, but a highly principled. So this, her works, your works, your life must speak of this. This is what mama laid into us. And then we can experience the same praising in the gates that Jesus Christ wants to give her and will give her on the day of the first resurrection. Together we fulfill this, we carry this out, the life of this virtuous woman and we become virtuous beings and Jesus Christ praises us in the gates when he comes to fetch us wow that is a that is a, a legacy that that's just a, a flow of blessing throughout the i want to say the bloodline be proud of the life that your your ma your mother your 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 
your grandmother, your great mother. Be proud and, and, and admire who she was. I tell you that helped me. Don't talk about myself, but that helped me. It was painful. But to look at the picture and, and just remember who she was, what she did, what she stood for. And you can look at your mother, your ma, your, with pride. Was who she was. And what she, what she set up for you in your life. Let this be your comfort. Let this be your strength. Let this be, be what carries you in the next couple of days, weeks, months. And, but you, you carry out what she does, what she taught you. And while you're doing so, you're mindful and, and you, you're proud and thankful of the fact, Mama taught me this. Mama told me this. And look at the blessing that it brings for me. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, It's a private cremation, right? I asked the congregation to stand, please. I will now do the committal of the, the soul. I now return the mortal body to the earth with the words, earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Soul and spirit, however, I commend to the love of Jesus Christ who shall guard over it until the resurrection to eternal life. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal, gracious God, thank you for your love. Thank you that you have allowed a blessed, peaceful, comforting message out of your word, dear Lord, that we could be provided with this through you, through your Holy Spirit. And we pray that that which has been received can be, can serve as a beautiful comfort and, and, and source of strength and the support, Father, over these few days. That even when we, we feel alone and miss Ma, miss Mama, that we can, we, can, we can draw on this and we can have this godly pride in what she did and what she stood for, that her works come forth out of our lives, Father. We all come, come short, dear Lord. We all fail. We all make mistakes and... When we reflect on our lives, we recognize that here and there we need to do better. And maybe as children, grandchildren, maybe we have not been as forthcoming in the way we've carried out that which Mama has taught us. We just want to do better, dear Lord. And we ask that you bless us in the days to come to do so. Grant now that we may experience your peace as we go forward into the day and the days to come. And allow that the prayers of our bearers of blessing may cover us always, dear Lord. Father, above all, you know that as, as it was Mama's desire that your son should return, this is our desire too, Father. And we want to be worthy for that day. Shorten the time and come and fetch us. Grant your final measure of grace so that we can be taken up to there, that beautiful place which your son has gone to prepare for us. This we pray of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I'll ask the poor bearers to come to the front while the choir sings an anthem.
start singing. I, I, I missed a small little part. A thank you from the family. The family of Magdalene George acknowledge with sincere appreciation and gratitude the many expressions of love, praise, kindness, and support during this time of bereavement. We extend a special thanks to all ministers, neighbors, and friends who played a role in the life of our dear loved one. May God's blessings and peace and love continue with you. Choir. Stand, please, as the curtain comes. <laughs> 